Here I am to worship. Morning, Alan. Good morning, Linda. Ah, you can hear me good. Yep. Oh, I've nearly done me. round one of my quiz. Say again? Nearly done round one of my quiz. Excellent. Based on key stage one and key stage two. <laughs> That's about uh, my level. You'd be surprised. Uh, anybody else in the prayers? Brian Perks. So I've got Barbara Barclay, her funeral's Tuesday. Yep. Anne Skillander. Yep. David Collins. Yep. John Unsworth. Yes. Brian Perks. Now, Brian Perks is still with us, so don't put him in funerals. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, right. He is the, um, he's a retired clergy person in this deanery and he's in hospital with COVID infection. Right. Uh, could you add my mom, Sylvia Jewell, to the funerals? Yes, of course. I had got her written down, just forgotten to mention her to yep. you. Yeah. Yep. And are you all right? Uh, yep. Good. Are you, you're doing the good shepherd, aren't you? Yes. Good. That's all right, because I've, I've put in some prayers together about shepherding and leading the country and that sort of thing. So, yeah. um, so what time should we go for the quiz? About eight o'clock? Eight o'clock, yeah. Right, so if you announce that and either, or I'll announce it when I announce the reflection, whichever. Yeah. yeah. Feedback, was my reflection all right on Wednesday? Um, I have not seen it yet. Oh, I I've seen your name popped up uh, yes and then we we were going out for a walk and so i didn't catch it and i oh, that's walked. okay then that's fine yeah. no, carol mcnab i've got as my critical friend at the moment she's right. doing very good good she's being fab do not disturb do not disturb Sorry about yesterday. <laughs> I just forgot. Well, as long as you're happy to do the prayers, that's fine. Oh, yeah. Um,
I can see the um, slide. Good. Morning, Jenny. Morning, Jenny. Morning. Kate and everybody okay? Yes, thank you. Yes. Good. Yeah. We uh, we see Helen every afternoon. David's teaching her to program using Scratch. Wow, oh, that must be nice. Yeah. Well, she yeah she I mean she gets a little bit wild because she's um you know hemmed in. Yeah. Very scarious. She's she's all she you know. In normal times, she just goes up and holds hands with strangers. So it's, uh, it's How old is she? Old. Sorry, six. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Steve. Oh, we are all here. And Richard's turned into a, a, a ceiling light. Can't see Richard yet. Oh, hang on. Oh, he's got his cup of coffee. <laughs> uh. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Um, so, Richard, uh, we're asking you to do the congregational responses. Apart from the Lord's Prayer, which Linda will do as part of the inter intercessions. So, um, if I give you an example. Um, grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. This is the day that, that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And then I'll say some words to introduce the confession and then you'll say, Lord God, we have sinned against you. We have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. And now I'm stuck because the uh, little videos are blocking the words. Yeah, so the videos are over the words, Alan. Uh, not in my view. All right. Um, I just need to change the view. Hang on. <laughs> Right, that, that's fixed it. How do you change your view? Above the video, Linda, there's, some, there's a bar with little uh, different shapes. There's a, a, one of them highlighted in blue and the other are in grey. And if you click through those, you'll get a different view. All oh, right, it's only showing me them down the side. Oh, I can move it. Where, it's, where it says speaker view, does that change it to gallery view? Then you see it, everyone. Show small active speaker video. Yeah, I can only see four people at once. Okay. But I can move it around if I need to. I can move it sideways. So it's Are you in full screen view? Yes. Oh, right. It turns on the size of your, your screen, I think, then, because I've got five of you at the moment. Let me see if I can just go into a slightly smaller view on me. Uh. Oh, yeah. View options. I, I was on side-by-side -side view, and I've taken that off, and so then I see all of Alan's screen. But with ah, that's good. Got it. Aye. There we go, we've learnt something new today. <laughs> we have. Um, today's, uh, one of my learning points is I've taken the arms off my chair um, because last Sunday when I picked my guitar up, I realised I can't really play the guitar in a chair with arms. Um, 
So that's my excuse for last week's Lamesy playing. I'll have a very different excuse today, I can promise you. Um, so, still waiting for Sally to join us. At 20 past, I need to start the slideshow and go live to Facebook and then hand over hosting of the meeting to Richard. Who will immediately mute us, hopefully. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> if only we could do that in real life. Ooh, no, you, don't no that. you don't mean that. You don't mean that. No, of course I don't mean that. No, never. Uh, Sally is uh, in the waiting room. I will admit her to the meeting. Alan, are you going to the wardrobe department before then as well? Um, uh, sorry, but my, my uh, wardrobe makeup and hair lady has not shown up for work this morning. I'm, I'm having to do my own, own costume. Good morning, Sally. No. Is that better, Stephen? Morning, Sally. Hello. That looks right. Good. Thank you. Morning. 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 Can you hear us? Yes. I'll turn my volume up a bit though. That's right. What's anybody doing today? Gardening. I painted the shed yesterday. Sorry? I painted the shed yesterday. Oh, well. oh. Yeah. We're waiting for the tip to reopen and then we can clear, you know, tidy the shed, but there's no point starting. No. What an exciting day that will be when the tips reopen. It will. <laughs> Dennis has had to put a new shower in because I was broke, fortunately, two days before B&Q reopened. Mm -hmm. I don't know how people cope because we've got our old shower outside in the garden. If you haven't got a garden, what do you do? Yeah. Yep. We've got a couple of black currant bushes and they won't be picked till late summer. So my stuff for the tip is sort of getting piled up by the black currant bushes, but just piled up. Yeah, like you say, if you haven't got a garden, or I feel for those people. Yeah, I really uh, do. Some places are only accepting black bag rubbish as well. Yeah. Hey, we don't. If people knew the sort of conversations we have before we start this, <laughs> <laughs> I probably should point out to you that um, Zoom records everything from the, the start of the meeting. So. <laughs> There is actually a record of everything you and I have said since we well, came. That's, it, could, it could go in your um, space tube that you put under St Matthews, unless we're too late for that. It, um, it, it, it might be useful for blackmail, you know, if my career <laughs> nosedives. I got one of these came through, Alan, so I thought maybe that should go in there as well. Oh, right. Yes, I've got that. It came with the Church Times. Yeah. What's that? It's a little booklet of prayers for use during the coronavirus outbreak that the Church of England has put together, including oh. a very simple daily prayer and compline. And I talk, you can see it there. Is it, is it on their website as well? I think so. I thought I've seen something on the website. But it's, it, it's a shame they didn't print enough copies for us, I suppose, Yes, it's very difficult to distribute them. They came, f one copy came free with the Church Times, so there are copies of it around. But it's very good, and it could have been the sort of thing that perhaps we could have distributed, but I don't know whether perhaps they ruled that out. Because um, unless you send things by post, there's a... It's, it um, says on the back where you can get more. Right, that's 20 past, so I'm going to restart my slideshow and then go live, and then I'm going to remember to hand over the meeting to Richard.
I will now silence my phone uh, because that's my phone telling me that we're live on uh, on Facebook. Uh, so welcome to uh, morning worship. I've confused myself because this, the image I can see on the screen is not the one I was expecting. Um, but there we are. Let's see what's happening there. Good morning. Welcome to uh, our morning worship for Sunday, the third of May, the, uh, the the fifth, sorry, the fourth Sunday after Easter. Um, we are hopefully showing. Yes, I think we are. Uh, some slides uh, that people, some pictures that people have sent me as a slideshow, um, pictures that people have taken of our two churches, St Matthew's in Stretton and St Cross Appleton Thorn. Uh, so if you're able to join us for worship, we, the service will start at about 10.30, thereabouts. And uh, we, will, um, we will let these images run so that you know that you're in the right place if you're joining us live on Facebook. Um, the uh, video will then be uploaded to Facebook as, uh, as a video that you can watch uh, at any time. So that looks like, I think we had this problem last time as well. The slideshow is still working on my um, screen and then it appears to have frozen on Facebook. So you're still seeing the same picture, whereas um, I've actually got uh, a nice slideshow happening. I wonder if I can restart it. So I'm going to welcome uh, those of you who are joining us now on uh, live on Facebook for our morning worship. Um, it's, uh, I've got uh, a number of names popping up on my screen, so I know who's uh, who's there. So thank you for joining us. Um, you're supposed to be watching a, a slideshow of images, um, but uh, at the moment it looks to me 
like uh, we're stuck on one particular screen, one particular picture. So um, I'm going to restart the PowerPoint slideshow um, and hopefully show you a few more um, pictures. Uh, thank you to people who've, who've taken photographs and sent them in. Um, there should be music behind the slides, but that's, uh, that was one thing too many for today. I didn't manage to get that arranged. Uh, but good morning to those of you who are joining us. Uh, so we are live on Facebook. Um, at the moment, I can still see that same picture. So the, uh, the, uh, the Facebook version of what we're doing appears to have frozen. Um, hopefully we will be able to sort that out. Uh, good morning, Jean. Good morning, Susan. Good morning, Jenny. And uh, everybody else who's out there watching. Uh, we'll be starting the, the service at just about um, half past ten. Uh, today is the fourth Sunday of Easter, sometimes called Good Shepherd Sunday. Um, the readings, um, two of them at least, that we're using today uh, have uh, uh, shepherd references in them. Uh, perhaps I should set you a competition, see if you can guess which psalm we're going to be using. Um, some of you will get that straight away, others may take a moment. Uh, but uh, our readings today, um, two of them at least, uh, do refer to shepherds. Um, on screen, uh, you will see at various points, depending on um, how you're watching, I think. Uh, but uh, you will see me, um, the Reverend Alan Jewell, Vicar of St. Matthew's Church in Stretton and St. Cross, Appleton Thorn, two parishes south of Warrington in the Church of England Diocese of Chester. Uh, and I'm joined by um, people from uh, both of our congregations, Linda, Richard, Stephen, Jenny and Sally. So good morning to them. Morning. They will be uh, sharing different parts of the service. Uh, so on uh, my on my screen, we have. Uh, uh, so I'm still seeing that same picture. Um, not to worry. Um, we'll we'll uh, we will amend that. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to stop sharing my screen for a moment, and then uh, restart the PowerPoint. Uh, presentation at the right point. Uh, so um, what that leaves on your screen uh, hopefully is uh, uh, you should be able to see a picture now what can you see? Well it looks like to me you can, like you can see all of us so uh, uh, a finer array of smiling faces was never assembled <laughs> in one place. Uh, welcome to our online morning worship um, I'm going to take a moment just to restart the, uh, the, the PowerPoint uh, presentation because I'm having a bit of a problem with that. Uh, so, uh, Linda, perhaps if we can have Linda's microphone on and she can tell us about some of the things that are coming up this week. Yeah, sure. Um, on, on Wednesday, I'm going to be doing my usual reflection at 7.30, which is about 10 to 12 minutes. But then at 8 o'clock, exciting news we would normally have our Stretton Fox big um, welcome quiz. Well, we're going to have a Facebook quiz at eight o'clock, a family friendly one. So at uh, eight o'clock, join us for a family friendly quiz. Um, and I'm writing the questions now. So be challenged and just come along for a bit of fun. Alan hasn't said what the prizes are yet. I should imagine it's just knowing that you've beaten him will be good enough for most of us. That would be quite something, wouldn't it? It would be excellent. 
and I'll make sure some of the questions are sort of twisted against him. <laughs> Just put lots of biblical and uh, theological questions in. I never get any of those. <laughs> no, but it, it will be family friendly. It will be family friendly. Great. So, um, assuming that I've managed to sort out my screen, uh, I'm going to um, uh, share what I can see over here, which is the order of service for, uh, it's an order um, from the Church of England's Common Worship Provision, which is called, um, it's called Morning Praise, and it's one that we've used in both churches at different times, and uh, um, that will be what will come up on the screen. I think I told you the first week we did this, um, I attended some online training on how to how to live stream worship. And uh, one of the points that was made was people don't expect it to be professional. So we put in these uh, pauses and glitches. Now, I'd like some reassurance. Yes, I'm getting a thumbs up from Linda to tell me that what you can see is uh, the opening screen of our service, Morning Praise, uh, and then the two church logos, St. Matthew's Church in Stretton and St. Cross Appleton Thorn. Um, I'm again just technologically challenged for a moment, uh, so just hang on. Uh, I've got, uh, you don't need to know this, I've got a foot switch that I'm using to change the, uh, I had a brilliant idea last, last time because uh, part of what we're doing is going to be singing a couple of hymns and I need to play my guitar for that. How do I change the words on the screen while I play my guitar? Well, I've got a, I've got a foot switch that does that um, and that's not working. So that's uh, another interesting challenge. Right. Um, Ignoring the foot switch, I've just uh, cl <laughs> clicked that manually. And um, we start with words of greeting. Uh, I'm going to lead the worship uh, using the words that you can see, hopefully on your screen. And then uh, Richard is going to uh, today be the congregation and give the congregational responses. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Uh, every service in church includes words of uh, penitence, where we acknowledge that we haven't been the people that we would like to have been. Uh, perhaps we feel we've let ourselves down. Perhaps we feel we've let others down. Uh, and we may even feel that we've let God down. The good news is that God knows that. Uh, he knows that's how we feel and offers uh, healing forgiveness. Uh, to all who turn to him uh, in, uh, in penitence, in repentance, in words of confession. Uh, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. Uh, but God has given us uh, the Lord Jesus Christ to assure us of his forgiveness. I'm going to ask Richard now to read the words that you'll see on your screen. Lord God, we have sinned against you. We have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Watch away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within us and restore to us the joy of your salvation. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. May the Father of all mercies cleanse you from your sins and restore you in his image to the praise and glory of his name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let everything be said and done in the name of the Lord Jesus. Giving thanks to God through Jesus Christ. Sing psalms, hymns and sacred songs. Let us sing to God with thankful hearts. Open our lips, Lord. And we shall praise your name. 
we are going to do that. We're going to sing uh, a song that we often sing uh, in uh, our church services. It's called Light of the World. Um, and it begins with the words, uh, well, the, the chorus rather is, uh, here I am to worship. So it's a good call to worship. And uh, as my foot switch isn't working, I'm going to have to work out a way of changing the words while playing the guitar. So welcome to the very unprofessional world of live stream worship uh, while I become the band. I'll have to pause between verses. I think that's the only way I can do it so that I can uh, move the screen on. Uh, light of the world. Light of the world, you step down into darkness. Open my eyes, let me see. come now to our scripture readings and uh, the first of them uh, from the uh, Acts of the Apostles. First reading is from the Acts of the Apostles chapter 2 verses 42 to 47. They devoted themselves to the Apostles teaching and fellowship to the breaking of bread and the prayers. All came upon everyone because many wonders and signs were being done by the Apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all as any had need. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the goodwill of all the people. And day by day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Uh, thank you, Jenny. Our next uh, reading is the psalm that I mentioned uh, at the start of this. And uh, Sally is going to read this for us, the 23rd psalm. The Divine Shepherd, a psalm of David. 
The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks. Uh, thank you, Sam. Um, so we are going to sing again, um, which will uh, once again present me with a, a, a variety of challenges, um, uh, including uh, finding, first of all, the, the sheet music. Um, and uh, so uh, this is The Lord's My Shepherd, um, which many people will have sung, particularly at funerals, although sometimes at weddings and on other occasions, um, a setting of the 23rd Psalm. But the version that perhaps more people are familiar with is, is set to the tune Crimmond. But this version, uh, written by a contemporary um, songwriter, Christian songwriter called Stuart Townend, um, takes the words of the, the 23rd Psalm and uh, uh, uses them as inspiration for a song which has a chorus, I will trust in you, I will trust in you alone. Uh, when we sing this in church, we split into two parts and some people sing a descant. Uh, so at home, if I hope you are singing along, uh, do please feel free to choose either the uh, the main tune or the death count. And uh, again, uh, work with me as we sing this. The Lord's my shepherd, I'll not want. He makes me lie in pastures green. Leads me by the still, still waters. His goodness restores my soul, and I will trust in you. guides my ways in righteousness, and he aligns my head with all, and my cup it overflows with joy, I feast on his pure delights, and I will trust in Uh, now uh, Stephen is going to read, uh, it's part of John chapter 10, uh, the gospel that's set for today. Reading from the gospel of John chapter 10 verses 1 to 10. Jesus the good shepherd. Ver very truly I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate but climbs in by another way is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. 
when he has brought out all of his own, he goes ahead of them and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who come before me are thieves and bandits. But the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and, and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, uh, Stephen, and thank you to Jenny and Sally, our other readers. Um, uh, today's, uh, uh, Linda's telling me I'm too quiet. Let me just come a bit closer to my microphone. Is that any better for you? Excellent. Um, thrown together with all the, uh, the, the confidence and competence that you'd expect uh, from me. Um, but I'm going to talk today about one of my favourite bits of scripture, and it was part of the reading that, uh, that um, Stephen just shared with us from John's Gospel. Um, some of my favourite uh, words in scripture. Jesus says, I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. Um, on Friday, just so you know, I spent about an hour, more than an hour actually, on, a, um, on some online training. Um, on how to do funerals in the present situation. Uh, you'll know, you'll understand that funerals are very different at the moment. Um, and some people seem to have got the impression that because church buildings are closed, you can't have a Church of England funeral, and that's not true. Um, church of England ministers, are, many are still available to take funerals. Um, they have to be at the graveside or in a crematorium chapel uh, because we're not trying to use our church buildings. Uh, but we are still doing them. Um, I've done two so far under the current restrictions, one at the crematorium, uh, where a small number of mourners sat in socially distanced seats around the chapel, um, and one burial, at which a small number of mourners stood at a distance from each other around the churchyard. Uh, the burial was streamed live via my iPhone on a camera tripod uh, to family members who were unable to be present. In my diary, I have two more funerals coming up. Uh, one a burial and one a cremation um, and I've been preparing them uh, via telephone and video conferencing uh, and some of you will know that uh, I am at the moment also looking at this from the other side which is that uh, we are preparing uh, for my own mother's funeral. So the Church of England is producing resources which you can find online including um, uh, an online uh, link where you can light a candle in memory of someone who has died. You can also download um, a, a, a sort of a form of prayer and reflection that you can read yourself uh, either before or during the funeral if you're not able to be there. If you want to know more about that um, please um, get in touch with me and I can point you at those things and increasingly funerals are being live streamed. One of the points that was made in the training that I did is that um, uh, it's to do with that there's been a shift in recent years about the way in which people see funerals, about the way in which we approach them. And often when families talk to me, they say, well, we don't want it to be too gloomy because we want it to be a celebration of their life. Um, but how do you celebrate a person's life when uh, only immediate family members are present, uh, even if others are watching online? Um, because what you get doesn't look like a celebration because the person's the wholeness of that person's life is not reflected by just having the immediate family present and so many of the things that we think of as being as funerals being for can't happen there are no hugs uh, there aren't even any handshakes uh, there's no wake to follow can't go back to the pub or a hotel function room to continue our celebration of that person's life um, telling the stories that didn't make it into the funeral service uh, including the ones that are not suitable for, for sharing in church, um, and laughing, uh, which is a very important part of a funeral, laughing as you remember the person, particularly happy memories of them. Canon Sandra Miller, uh, who like uh, a lot of very good things, comes from the Diocese of Gloucester, led the training, 
uh, is part of the Church of England's funeral project. Um, and she said, in her experience, these kind of funerals, and from talking to others, uh, they tend to put all the focus on that sense of loss. Uh, and so the new way of doing funerals tends to focus on loss rather than on celebration, whatever you intend. One of the points that Callan, Canon Miller made is that the Church of England actually has a lot to offer those who are arranging funerals because we've been, well, we've been doing it for centuries uh, and we have a, a message, a gospel to proclaim that is about hope and comfort and compassion. Uh, and there are many stories of uh, funerals being done badly by careless priests, we've all heard them, but there are far more people who remember the minister at their funeral offering support and compassion uh, at a time when you as a family are very low on resources. Uh, the Reverend Kate Botley, uh, better known as the uh, the Gogglebox vicar, that vicar off the telly, one of, the, one of those telly vicars, um, she said in a podcast about funerals, um, afterwards people don't remember the words that you've said, they remember the tune, a bit like a song, you don't remember the words but you know the tune, that's how people um, recall funerals, they don't pay attention necessarily very carefully to your finely crafted address that clergy spend uh, all that time preparing. They don't remember that. What they remember is how you said it. Um, and uh, she sums that by saying people don't remember the words of a funeral, but they remember the tune. Uh, and the church is pretty good at funerals, even though uh, we are being asked to do a smaller proportion of them, um, just generally as people turn towards secular celebrants and other options. Um, but it's my prayer that people will remember the tune of the services that I have conducted and those that I will be conducting. But faith is not just about death. It's not just about life after death, even though that's a prominent part of our message, particularly uh, in the funeral uh, service. Faith is about life, and it is about life before death. Jesus, the Good Shepherd, said, I came that they, that you and I, may have life and have it abundantly. And that life is for today um, and tomorrow and beyond. Uh, in the gospel that Stephen read for us, Jesus talks about himself as the good shepherd, as I mentioned, I think, today sometimes known for Sunday of Easter, sometimes known as Good Shepherd Sunday. Jesus contrasts himself, the good shepherd, with the thief or the bandit, the sheep rustler. Um, and he's talking about religious and other leaders who are just in it for what they can get out of it. The thief, he says, comes only to steal and kill and destroy. Uh, Jesus, on the other hand, is the good shepherd who came that we may have life and have it abundantly. So may you today know the presence, wherever you are, of Jesus, the good shepherd. Uh, may you know his voice and follow him to the good pasture. Uh, even if we sometimes find ourselves, as the psalmist says, walking through the darkest valley, the valley of the shadow of death. Uh, even there, uh, we are invited to know the, the, the presence, the compassion and the comfort of the Good Shepherd. Uh, and may you know this abundance of life in this world and the next. Amen. Uh, and incidentally, that expression, we believe in life before death, is one that Christian Aid uses. Next week is uh, the 10th to the 16th of May is Christian Aid Week, and we will be using some of their material for our worship next Sunday morning. And there are other things um, I've sent out in a, 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 the, the notices email um, if you want to subscribe to our notices, please let me know uh, about how Christian Aid, because of course that's going to be very different this year. Um, and Jenny, who is our local Christian Aid organiser, um, has written a piece which has been circulated with the notices. We move now to the Creed, uh, where we say um, we're given a, a summary of what Christians believe, and uh, Richard is going to lead this for us. I believe in God. The Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, 
the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Uh, and now Linda, Linda Buckley, our reader, is going to lead us in our prayers of intercession. When I say, Lord, in your mercy, the response is, hear our prayer. Hear our prayer. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, prayer. our prayer. Lord, you came that we may have life and have it abundantly. So we bring our prayers to you confident that they will be answered. As the shepherd cares for the sheep, we pray that all political leaders will care for their people. We know that they have very difficult decisions in ever-changing situations. So we pray for the scientists and all who advise them. We also pray for our health workers and carers and all others keeping us fed and safe. We pray that as well as bringing hope, comfort and compassion, they too will experience hope, comfort and compassion in their own lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our schools. We continue to pray for our schools, for all staff and pupils. And we also pray for all of those people who are struggling to balance homeschooling. We know that the quality of what's being provided is, differs widely. But we pray that too, that you will allow parents to be kind to themselves and understand that, that they can't do everything in the home. So we pray that all homes may be places of home, hope, comfort and compassion. And for those homes where there's difficulty and stress, where there's anger and abuse, we pray, Lord, that somebody will intervene and support. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, hear prayer. our prayer. We pray for any who are ill, whether from coronavirus or existing conditions. We pray for those who are too fearful to go to hospital or to the GP. And we pray for any who are waiting the results of tests. We pray for all who care for them as well. In a moment of quiet, we just think of any who are known to us who are struggling at this time. And we've also been asked to pray for Brian Parks. Again, may all who are ill and all who care for them experience your hope, comfort and compassion. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We acknowledge the difficulties at the moment of celebrating the lives of those who've died in addition to mourning their loss. And we just pray that people manage to cope in this difficult situation and realise that there will be a time in the future when they will be able to come together and hug and support each other in different ways. So we bring before you the family and friends of those who've died. And we think about Barbara Barclay, Anne Skillander, David Collins, John Unsworth, Sylvia Jewell. We pray for all who are facing funerals this week. We also lift up as well, Lord, all the clergy and others who are taking your funeral, taking the funerals in these very difficult times. May all be reassured by your words. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, prayer. hear our prayer. May we know the presence and the voice of Jesus, the Good Shepherd, in our lives. And may we know abundance of life in this world as we too prepare for the next. Merciful Father, accept, accept these prayers, prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, our Saviour Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Amen. 
We'll now say the Lord's Prayer. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The Collect for today, the fourth Sunday of the Easter season. Risen Christ, faithful shepherd of your father's sheep, Teach us to hear your voice and to follow your command, that all your people may be gathered into one flock, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Uh, in a moment, uh, I'm going to say some words of blessing, but before that, um, let me tell you about a few things that are coming up. Um, next Sunday, 10th of May, is the fifth Sunday of Easter, um, and it's also the start of Christian Aid Week. Um, as I say, in the notices email that went out, um, there is information about that. You can also find Christian Aid Week online uh, to see how you can give and support Christian Aid um, at a time when there will be no um, house to house collections. Jenny, I'm just wondering if we could unmute Jenny's microphone. Then. Could you just say a brief word? We normally have you in church talking about Christian Aid Week. Could you just say a word today? Um, gosh, you caught me on the hop. Um, I'm sorry. Thank you very much. Yes. Um... Christian Aid Week, um, as Alan just said, we can't. Oh, now you've frozen. So, um, <laughs> there we go. Technology. Um, so, uh, sorry, can on, Alan? Uh, I couldn't hear you for a moment. Would you just repeat what you've just said? Okay. Um, sorry. Um, yes, Christian Aid Week starts next Sunday. There are on the Christian Aid uh, Facebook page reflections and services, um, also a daily quiz. Um, but I've got a PDF of a different quiz that um, if you let me or Alan know that you'd like to have it, I can send you a copy. I'm also trying to, within social distancing and exercise rules, um, cycle from Land's End to John O'Groats, not by myself. I can manage about 15 miles a day if I'm concentrating. Um, but if anybody would like to be sponsored to add to our total of... ...a Just Giving page that I've set up. So that's a few ideas, but um, the Christian Aid website um, is... Uh, you're breaking up a bit, Jenny, so, but I think we've got uh, the gist of that. And uh, certainly people can get in touch with me or with, uh, or with Jenny um, to find out more about how we're going to be doing Christian Aid Week. Um, uh, I may, if I can get it sorted, uh, I may, have, uh, may be able to, uh, and it's quite a coup for us really, is that our preacher next week may be the former Archbishop of Canterbury, uh, the, uh, Dr. Rowan Williams. Um, I mean, he's not going to be sitting in the, the study with me. <laughs> but, um, I, I understand that he's going to make a sermon available for Christian Aid Week, and we may be able to use that in our morning worship. I'm hoping we will. Um, uh, if not, you can always uh, give me a call and uh, deliver it live by, by Zoom or telephone. Um, another couple of other things. Uh, later on today, um, on the first Sunday of the month, we would normally have um, evening prayer from the Book of Common Prayer at St. Matthew's. So I'm going to um, lead a short service of evening prayer using the Book of Common Prayer at 6.30 tonight. Tomorrow, Monday the 4th of May, um, in, in the Netherlands, it's kept as a day of remembrance for all those who, who lost their lives um, during the occupation of the Netherlands in the Second World War, but uh, in peacekeeping and other operations since then. Um, at St Cross in Appleton Thorn, because we have uh, a number of Dutch airmen who are buried in the churchyard there, because of their association with um, uh, 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 Black Cap, um, 
we have been marking this for a number of years so we can't do that we can't go into the churchyard um, if you live in Appleton Thorn or you're passing through you'll see um, the, the Dutch flag flying from our flagpole um, and uh, that was uh, to, to commemorate um, those uh, who are being remembered uh, so I will present a brief act of remembrance on Monday evening at eight o'clock again on the St Matthew's Church Facebook page Wednesday, as Linda has mentioned, there will be her reflection at 7.30 and then the quiz will start, family friendly quiz um, at eight o'clock. Uh, we've been having those uh, in the Stretton Fox, so you have to provide your own refreshments for this one. But join us for a quiz on Facebook at eight o'clock on Wednesday night. Friday um, at two o'clock, praise and play. Uh, thank you to everybody who's been joining us for that. And then next Sunday, start of Christian Aid Week, our online worship um, at 10.30 will include Christian aid material. Um, Friday the 8th uh, is also the uh, 75th anniversary of VE Day, the end of uh, hostilities in Europe uh, um, at the end of the Second World War. Uh, we had planned to do afternoon tea in St Matthew's um, uh, as part of that to, to celebrate that. That obviously can't happen. Um, what I propose to do at 4.30 on Sunday afternoon is to um, um, I'm going to have my own afternoon tea at home at the vicarage and lead a bit of a sing-along um, sort of thing we've done with the singing cattle where we've done some of the songs from um, the Second World War. So my suggestion is on Sunday afternoon at 4.30 uh, you put your best bib and tucker on and you get some scones or scones depending on whether how you say that um, and sandwiches and cake whatever and we'll have an afternoon tea virtually we'll, we'll be spread out um, and I, as part of that, I will lead um, some singing, including, of course, We'll Meet Again, uh, which I know a number of people will be singing on Friday itself. And then on Sunday the 10th, again, in the evening, um, we had planned to do a sort of service marking um, the, the 75th anniversary of VE Day. Um, I will do a form of evening prayer uh, with that as its theme. So that's uh, next Sunday at 6.30. So I think that's all we need to say. I'm going to... Um, uh, uh, say some words of blessing uh, and a closing prayer. So uh, let's gather together virtually and at distance, but together in thought and prayer. Christ, the good shepherd, who laid down his life for the sheep, draw you and all who hear his voice to be one flock within one fold. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Thank you for joining us for today's service of uh, morning worship. Um, we've been through details of what's happening next week, and I hope that you can join us for some or all of that. And uh, until then, um, stay safe and keep well, and we look forward to catching up with you um, virtually and then. Um, hopefully before very much longer in real life. Uh, can I say thank you on your behalf to uh, Linda, Richard, Stephen, Sally and Jenny. And uh, I'm waving to them. <laughs> they can wave back. And uh, we look forward to, to um, if anybody else would like to come and join us on screen for next Sunday's worship. Um, we use a platform called Zoom. You just have to download Zoom. Um, and uh, if, you're, if you're moderately competent technically, which <laughs> I can see from the faces of my fellow contributors, none of us claim to be, uh, you will be able to join us. Um, uh, Jenny's just messaged me to say she hopes it was clear that this, uh, the, the sponsored walk cycle is virtual. People are doing it at home. Okay, so just in case you didn't grasp that. Um, so no, um, uh, no endangering of people's health and well-being. Uh, it will be done at home. Um, last week we said happy birthday to Wendy Homer. I don't know whether she heard it, but I suspect she didn't. Um, but Wendy was 80 yesterday, so I think that's worth a second mention. Um, and I know, um, had a, a, a picture emailed to me by Jill Bruce, that she and some others, um, observing all the social distancing and so on, um, went round to, to say, and probably even sing happy birthday to Wendy for her 80th, uh, which was yesterday. So we add our congratulations to Wendy and send her our love. So uh, thank you for being here. Thank you to those who have been sharing and uh, we, are, uh, we look forward to catching up with you. And until then, um, stay safe, keep well and uh, the Lord bless you. That's it. He's gone, he's gone off mute, he's gone off.
Facebook and he's disappeared. He's gone. <laughs> left us. He's run off and left us. <laughs> oh well. <laughs> I, I, this week I had the service on Facebook on my phone right. as well as on Zoom. And I was surprised at the delay between what I see on Zoom and what I see on my phone. Oh, yeah. Oh, there's a delay for everybody else. Oh, yes. Yes, it's, oh, it's, yes. it's several seconds later what actually goes out live. Yeah. That, that's why when the BBC are doing all these interviews, there's always a delay in the answers because of the way, the way that the technology works. It's the way it is at the moment everywhere. Can I check with Richard that we have stopped streaming? Yes, we've stopped streaming. Yeah, oh. <laughs> <Good>. <laughs> a sudden panic then that we were uh, that we were still online. I've switched my camera off, um, but I am still here. Oh, there we are. Right. Yeah. No, you get so you get the do, delay automatically, Sally. But do they hear it in line with what's being said then, or no? no they hear it several seconds late. Okay, the whole package. The then. whole so thing. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Which is why uh, the first couple of times we tried to do this, I had Facebook open with the sound on and it's impossible because you hear yourself coming back five seconds later. So if you have got, if you are looking at it on Facebook live, you must have the sound off. Uh, you'll notice yeah. that all the, the screens change late and, and everything, but um, uh, that's, uh, that's... As long that. as they hear it in sequence as well yeah, as oh, yes. it, yeah. then that's it's, balanced. It starts... 30 seconds late and continues or whatever you know a few seconds late right well thank you very much thank you and, yeah. uh, thank you nice sermon yeah. alan thank you, thank you. Uh, yeah I'll, I'll see how rowan gets on next week yeah I'm, I'm always terrified whenever I say his name that I'm going to say Rowan Atkinson by mistake. <laughs> and and I, I wouldn't be the first person who's done that, who's referred to him as Rowan Atkinson. No. So um, as, as things currently stand, I can never remember which one is a former Archbishop and which one is Mr. Bean. Um. Okay. Have a right, nice thank you very day. much. Bless you. Goodbye. Bye, everybody. Bye. 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 Bye.